Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the anterior compartment of the forearm. This specimen shows the lower part of the forearm along with the palmar aspect of the hand. Here you can also observe the flexor retinaculum, which is located in the distal part of the forearm, just before the wrist. On the lateral side, at the base of the thumb, you can see the thenar muscles forming the thenar eminence. On the medial side, near the base of the little finger, are the hypothenar muscles forming the hypothenar eminence. Just medial to the hypothenar eminence, you can identify the ulnar nerve, which lies superficial to the flexor retinaculum. The median nerve, on the other hand, passes deep to the flexor retinaculum along with the flexor tendons as it enters the palm through the carpal tunnel. Now let's look at the structures proximal to the flexor retinaculum. On the lateral side, the brachioradialis muscle can be identified, and along its medial border, you can see the radial artery running distally. Just medial to the radial artery, there is the tendon of flexor carpi radialis. In the distal part of the forearm, the median nerve comes to the surface briefly before it dives deep beneath the flexor retinaculum. The group of tendons lying medial to the median nerve belong to the flexor digitorum superficialis, which sends tendons to the fingers. The medial most muscle in this region is the flexor carpi ulnaris. At the distal end of the flexor carpi ulnaris, the ulnar nerve becomes superficial, and as it continues downward, it passes superficial to the flexor retinaculum to reach the hand. Beneath the distal flexor retinaculum, in the palm, you can clearly see the four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis passing towards the fingers. This specimen demonstrates the superficial muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm. Now let's identify the superficial muscles of the forearm from lateral to medial. The lateral most muscle is the brachioradialis. Running along this muscle is the radial artery. Brachioradialis also forms the lateral boundary of the cubital fossa. Just posterior to the brachioradialis, you can see the partially visible tendon of the extensor carpi radialis longus. Distal to the tendon of brachioradialis, the cut end of the abductor pollicis longus can be identified. Moving medially in the proximal part of the forearm lies the pronator teres. This muscle runs obliquely and forms the medial boundary of the cubital fossa. Partially overlapping it is the flexor carpi radialis, whose tendon lies medial to the radial artery. Next, the muscle medial to the flexor carpi radialis is the flexor digitorum superficialis. In the distal part of the forearm, the median nerve can be seen coursing between the flexor carpi radialis and the flexor digitorum superficialis. The flexor retinaculum has been removed here to display its deep relations clearly. Finally, on the medial most side, you can identify the flexor carpi ulnaris. This image shows the same specimen after the flexor carpi ulnaris and brachioradialis muscles have been cut and removed, allowing a clearer view of the deeper muscles, particularly the pronator teres and flexor digitorum superficialis. In the upper part of the specimen, the brachialis muscle can be seen just before its insertion onto the ulna. On the lateral side proximally, the cut ends of the brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, and extensor carpi radialis brevis are visible. On the medial side, you can identify the cut ends of the flexor carpi radialis and the flexor carpi ulnaris muscles. The lateral deep muscle now exposed is the supinator, which occupies the proximal part of the radial surface. Just below it, you can clearly see the pronator teres running obliquely from the medial epicondyle of the humerus toward the lateral border of the radius, positioned just distal to the supinator. 
The Flexor Digitorum Superficialis is also well demonstrated here, showing its broad muscle belly that splits distally into individual tendons destined for the fingers. On the medial side of the Flexor Digitorum Superficialis, the Flexor Digitorum Profundus can be partially seen, lying deeper in position. In the distal part of the forearm, you can also note the cut ends of several muscles including the abductor pollicis longus, brachioradialis, flexor carpi radialis, and flexor carpi ulnaris. On further dissection, the deeper muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm are now exposed. Before identifying these deeper structures, let's first recognize the cut ends of the muscles that have been dissected. Proximally, on the lateral aspect, we can see the cut ends of the brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, and extensor carpi radialis brevis. On the medial side, the fused tendons of the superficial flexors can be identified. These arise from the common flexor origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Also visible superiorly is the terminal part of the brachialis muscle just before its insertion into the ulnar tuberosity. Nearby, the cut end of the tendon of the biceps brachii can also be observed. Now, among the deep muscles, the supinator is seen on the lateral side, wrapping around the proximal part of the radius. Adjacent to it lies the flexor pollicis longus, whose tendon is clearly demonstrated as it courses toward the thumb. The flexor digitorum profundus can be seen medially, and in the distal part of the forearm, it is shown dividing into four tendons, which pass toward the fingers. In the distal region, the cut ends of the abductor pollicis longus, brachioradialis, flexor carpi radialis, and flexor carpi ulnaris are again visible. This image demonstrates the deep dissection of the distal one-third of the forearm after removing the flexor pollicis longus and flexor digitorum profundus muscles. Their cut ends can be appreciated superiorly in the specimen. The horizontally oriented muscle seen here is the pronator quadratus, clearly showing its attachments between the radius and the ulna. Notice the glistening connective sheet between these two bones. This is the interosseous membrane which firmly connects the radius and ulna and serves as a site for muscular and fascial attachments. Just proximal to the pronator quadratus, the neurovascular bundle can be identified. It contains the anterior interosseous nerve and vessels supplying the deep flexor compartment. In the distal part of the specimen, the cut ends of the abductor pollicis longus flexor carpi radialis, and flexor carpi ulnaris are also visible. This image demonstrates the nerves and blood vessels present in the anterior compartment of the forearm with the flexor retinaculum intact. Let's begin identifying the nerves from the lateral side. The thin nerve seen in relation to the brachioradialis is the radial nerve. In the proximal part of the forearm, we can observe its termination where it divides into two branches. The deep branch, which passes deep to brachioradialis and pierces the supinator muscle, and the superficial branch, which continues superficial to the brachioradialis. Next, the median nerve is clearly seen between the cut ends of the superficial and deep heads of pronator teres. As it courses distally, it passes deep to the flexor retinaculum. From it arises the anterior interosseous nerve, a deep branch that supplies the deep flexor muscles. On the medial side, the ulnar nerve is observed passing superficial to the flexor retinaculum. Now moving on to the blood vessels, the prominent vessel seen superiorly lateral to the median nerve is the brachial artery. Accompanying it, you can see the cut end of its veins comitantes. In the proximal forearm, the brachial artery divides into its terminal branches. 
the radial artery, which remains superficial throughout its course, and the ulnar artery, which runs lateral to the ulnar nerve before becoming superficial alongside it, both passing superficial to the flexor retinaculum. From the proximal part of the ulnar artery, you can identify a branch, the common interosseous artery. Distally, the cut ends of the flexor carpi radialis, flexor digitorum superficialis, and flexor carpi ulnaris are also visible. 